Hey everybody, it's Magic Prepper, and today we're going to talk about the eight things you need to buy as a new gun owner. If you just recently bought a handgun, specifically a pistol in this video, due to all the things that are happening around the world, and you needed that SHTF gun to get you ready to go, these are the eight things you're going to need to get in order to have the complete package and get started with being a new handgun owner. Okay, so you just recently purchased a handgun, a pistol maybe, to get you through SHTF that you're worried about being able to defend yourself, defend your family, defend the ones you love. And you wanted to make sure you had something ready to go in case of an emergency. Well, this video is for all those new gun owners out there who just recently picked up their first pistol and need an idea of what they need to go get next. There's a lot of things, a lot of accessories out there that you're going to be wondering about whether or not you need them. And you're going to also be wondering how much you need to spend in order to get everything that you need to have ready to go. So um, real quick, if you do like videos about firearms, SHTF topics, or just being prepared in general, go ahead and hit the subscribe button below. It's down here in the right hand corner and it's really going to help this channel grow and I really appreciate everybody's support. I want to give you guys good information and I'm going to try my best to give you logical but budget friendly information that can get you started and get everything in place for you to make it a little bit easier being a new gun owner, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the steps and kind of just you know show you each category of item that you're going to want to pick up and then We'll talk about why they're important and what you need them for, and at the same time, just give you a nice list to check off if it's something you're interested in as a firearm owner. This list is not gonna be in priority because I don't necessarily think some of these items are more important than the other. However, if I do have to give you any sense of priority, just make sure that you're safe. Be very safe with your firearms, learn proper firearm etiquette, and get secured devices to keep your firearms stored in, which will be on the list and we will talk about that later. So we'll go ahead and get started, but real quick, just for demonstration, today's firearm is gonna be the Sig Sauer P320C. It's a nine millimeter double stack compact polymer pistol, very similar to what a lot of people are probably out there buying right now. Um, we'll go ahead and show you. It is in fact not loaded, okay? No round in the chamber, safe. Um, it's a nice pistol. It has a really good ergonomic feel to it. It holds 15 rounds flush of nine millimeter. However, you can get up to a 21 round magazine for it. So if this is a style of pistol that you've recently purchased and you're ready to get started being a gun owner and you want to get some items to go with your pistol, then stick around. I'll go through each item categorically. And then at the end of the video, we'll just talk about what you need first and what's uh, most important. All right, so first on our list is ammunition. Without ammunition, a firearm is basically useless. It's a paperweight. So you're gonna need to pick up some ammo first and foremost. Now there's a lot of other accessories that are very important. However, without ammunition, having the firearm is basically worthless, okay? so. There's a lot of different types of ammo and there's a lot of different options you're going to have out there and I'm not going to go through every single option out there on the market because that video would be really, really long. So in order to kind of simplify this and just give you some basic ideas, um, I have a couple types of ammunition here and the real situation I'm trying to discuss here is the fact that there is such a thing as range and training ammo and then there is such a thing as self-defense ammunition, okay? So what you want to do is you want to pick up a decent amount of range and training ammo. It's going to be less expensive. It's going to be generally full metal jacket, okay? What that means is some people refer to it as ball ammo. It is just jacketed bullets. They're not hollow points. They're not performance. They are literally made to just shoot down range and to target practice and to get trained up and learn how to use your firearm properly, okay? So right here I have the good old Winchester white box. Very inexpensive ammo. I think I paid $11 a box for this. Um, 50 rounds of 9 millimeter in here. We'll go ahead and just take it out just so you can kind of see it, okay? So it comes in like a little foam container to keep it organized. And then this is what I mean by full metal jacket. It is just a copper jacketed round. It has no hollow point, no performance technology really. It's just a basic bullet and it's made to do exactly what it's for, which is right here on the box. It says target, right? So basically for target practice. Now this is also the similar ammunition that they use in the military because full metal jackets, um, you know, they get the job done of course, but um, for training purposes and for civilian life, this is what you're looking for in order to spend the least amount of money, but still get the experience and still learn how to use your firearm, okay? Then when you're gonna shoot over here, we're gonna look at more of our performance ammunition. Now, um, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of different options for this. So these are just two examples. These are not me saying that these are the best ones to buy. This is just me talking about performance, self-defense ammunition and why you need it, okay? So these are hollow points. Basically what that means is that when they hit their target, they expand on impact and they give as much of the energy from the round 
into the target as possible, hopefully eliminating the, eliminating the threat as soon as possible, okay? So we open this up, and you can see uh, the rounds are a little bit fancier, right? These are nickel-plated cartridges, basically to help prevent corrosion, and then you do have the hollow point there in the bullet itself. So that just helps disperse the energy. It's gonna be better for self-defense, and these rounds are specifically designed for that, okay? And then there's other fancy rounds, like these Fort Scott ammunition rounds right here in nine millimeter, and let's see, you have, you know, more of like a tumble upon impact bullet is what they call these. It's just like a sharper um, full metal jacket that's weighted to, you know, have higher performance when it does hit its target. So these are just things for everyone to consider. But what I suggest is you get a few boxes at least. I mean, I, honestly, anyone will tell you in this genre, buy as much ammo as you can, right? I'm not going to argue with that. But if you're going to get started and you want just a place to go, Buy a few boxes of this regular full metal jacket, um, white box style ammunition. Whatever you can get in the you know, $10 to $15 range that gets you the most rounds for your money and gets you out at the range practicing and training. That's going to be huge for being a new gun owner. You need all of that. And then you need to go ahead and buy a few boxes of the self-defense ammo because not only do you need it for self-defense and for protecting yourself with your um, maximum efficiency, but you need to practice with the self-defense ammo too. Not every firearm cycles hollow point ammunition correctly. The little ridges on the edge of the bullet can get caught up inside of your firearm and you're not sure if it's gonna perform correctly when you need it, okay? So if that's a problem, then you need to find out before you actually need it for a self-defense scenario. So any self-defense ammunition you would purchase, you have to go try at the range. You have to test it out on your firearm and if it doesn't work correctly, if your firearm doesn't like to cycle that ammunition, you need to switch to something else and try that instead. And so that's my suggestion with ammunition. Make sure you buy some training ammo, make sure you buy some self-defense ammo, and then do exactly what you're supposed to do. Train with it, shoot it, find out how your firearm works, and then see if this ammunition feeds well in your firearm. And if it does, make the right choice for your self-defense application. Okay, so next on our list is gonna be additional magazines. You need extra magazines. Now most firearms today come with two or three magazines. It depends on who you buy them from. Some companies like Springfield will offer you three extra magazines when you buy a firearm. Some other companies might only give you one magazine with the firearm. It kind of depends on what you purchase and what type of company you're working with. Um, my Sig Sauer P320C actually came with two magazines and then I bought additional magazines after the fact. So you will want more magazines in order to make sure that you have the ability to reload when needed. You wanna make sure you have the ability to carry additional magazines. If you're in an SHTF scenario and you wanna be able to get through whatever is coming your way, you need the ability to reload quickly. Putting rounds into a magazine is way more time consuming than just putting a new magazine in. So you wanna make sure you have extras and if there's a malfunction or something's broken in a magazine, you wanna make sure you have other ones that will work and you don't have to rely on that singular magazine that no longer works properly, okay? So go out, buy some magazines. What I suggest, and here's my suggestion to everyone out there, buy factory manufactured magazines. And what I mean by that is buy magazines made by the manufacturer of the firearm you're buying the magazines for. Why do I say that? Well, reliability for one, these magazines are specifically designed for the firearm that you purchased and they are made to work properly with that firearm more so than any other aftermarket magazine out there. Yes, you can get some Pro Mag magazines for cheaper. Yes, even Magpul makes magazines now for Glocks. However, if I'm gonna spend the money on a magazine, even if it's double the price of what a Pro Mag might cost me, I'm gonna buy the Sig Sauer magazine. I'm gonna buy the Beretta magazine. I'm gonna buy the H&K magazine. Whatever manufacturer your firearm is, that's who you should be buying your magazines from. And it's just because you wanna have maximum reliability and you wanna make sure that when you need to use that firearm, it's gonna do the job that you expect it to do. So don't play around with magazines, don't risk it. Just buy the factory magazines, spend the extra money and you'll be much happier. Now this particular platform comes in the 15 round flush magazine. This is like a C or a compact style model. Okay, look it's safe, we did a safety check there. Okay, so. 15 rounds is excellent, okay? And then you can carry them flush for concealed carry to make it easier for it to hide you know, underneath your shirt in your waistline, okay? But um, you can buy other magazines. So for this firearm, what's nice about the compact size is that it will also accept anything from the compact size magazines up to the full size magazines. 
And they even have some specialty magazines, like this one right here, which is a 21 round magazine made for the SIG P320. This is made for their full size model, but you can easily still insert it into a compact frame, okay? The only thing you can't do is insert a smaller magazine into a larger frame. So the bigger the magazine, you can put it in a smaller frame. Smaller magazine, you cannot put it in a bigger frame. So in this example, that'd be a subcompact 12 round magazine would not fit in here, okay? But what's nice is they also sell this product called X-Grips, and it's like a little rubber insert you can put on the bottom of the magazine and it fills up the space between the grip and the bottom of the magazine to kind of make sure there's a flush fit okay so i'll show you right here we got a 21 round magazine it goes right here okay clips right in and then i have 21 rounds of nine millimeter ready to go plus if i had one loaded in a chamber that's 22 rounds of nine millimeter that's a lot of firepower right there and with this x grip insert right here there is now like a flush uh grip still it's not got a big gap right here where the magazine would usually just be hanging down from the bottom of the grip and it still makes for a comfortable grip for me uh, and i still feel like i can wield the 21 round magazine very well so you can buy magazines in different configurations you can buy magazines in different sizes um, and you can buy you know all types of different um uh, you know, arrangements when it comes to your additional magazines. However, like I said, and I want to reiterate this, just buy from the factory. This is a Sig Sauer 21 round magazine. This is not some kind of pro mag 33, 50, 60 round magazine. All those sound awesome in theory and they sound like a great idea. But if you're a new gun owner, don't bet your life or don't bet your self-defense on something that is gimmicky. Make sure you just buy something from the manufacturer that's backed by the manufacturer that's guaranteed to work properly in the firearm it was designed for. Okay, so um, the next thing on the list is going to be a holster. You need a high quality holster to be able to carry your firearm properly, okay? You want something that you can wear on your waistline and have your firearm there at your side at all times if need be. If we're talking about an SHTF firearm, an SHTF handgun in particularly, you bought this gun because things are getting weird and things are getting a little bit hectic and you want to make sure you can protect yourself and you want to be able to carry this gun around during those times of trouble, okay? So in order to do so properly, you need to buy a holster. Now there's tons and tons and tons of holster options out there, and there's a million different ways to Sunday you can carry a gun. So I'm just gonna give you some very basic ideas and basic tips about buying a holster and what you should be looking for and what decisions you should make in that process, and then just give you some ideas about um, you know, why it's important to have one. So first off, I wanna say that you can get a holster for outside the waistband, inside the waistband, appendix carry, a million other configurations. What you wanna do as a new gun owner, a new pistol owner, is get something somewhat basic. My suggestion, especially for those of you who either don't have the ability to conceal carry or aren't planning on concealed carrying, even though I always advocate for everyone to do the best they can to acquire that ability, I would suggest getting a holster that has more than one configuration for you in order to operate in the way that you want, even if you change your mind down the road. So. An example of that is right here. This is a crossbreed reckoning holster. This is generally made for inside the waistband carry. It's a holster that is specifically designed to be for concealed carry. These belt loop clips come out over the top of your pants and they hook onto your belt from the inside of your pants. So that way that most of the firearm is at least hidden behind your clothing. However, this particular holster can be reconfigured to be an outside the waistband holster where you would flip the clips onto the back of the holster and it would then just hook onto your belt loop. That gives you some options. And what I like about it is that it is simple. It's an easy design. It's a slide style holster. There's no buttons or anything you have to worry about, but it also lets you carry inside the waistband if you want to conceal and outside the waistband if you want to do target practice or quick draw practice or anything along those lines, okay? So having options is nice. One thing I want to mention for sure is that when it comes to a holster, you're always better off buying something specifically molded to your firearm. You want to buy a holster for your Glock 19. You want to buy a holster for your Beretta 92. You want to buy a holster specifically made for the make and model of your firearm because it's going to fit better, it's going to work better, and it all around is going to be a better holster for you in the long run. This is called a universal slide holster. What this does is it just has a lot of tension on the sides here. You pop it open, you slide a gun in there, you clip this on your belt, and it can fit almost any single gun you can think of in it, okay? But this is not a good holster. This is not something you guys should be buying for your holster. This is something you might buy as a new gun owner, and I wanted to show you 
something you shouldn't do basically as well. Yes, it's a universal holster. I mean, it has some benefits to it. And I actually keep one in my bug out bag because I feel like if uh, you ever run across a random firearm that you need to pick up and carry, then I have a holster that can fit just about anything in it. But if you're gonna have one holster, you gotta get something specifically molded to your firearm. It's gonna be better quality, better functioning, and it's just gonna be all around a better experience for you. This holster is garbage. Let's be honest. This is a garbage holster. Do not buy stuff like this. Don't buy the, you know, leather or the nylon holster that is a universal fit and can have 20 different firearms on it. You're going to want to spend the additional money to just have something specifically made for your firearm and you'll be much happier with it. This holster right here, I think it was about $30. This holster was about $65. Yes, they can be pricey. You can go all the way up to hundreds of dollars for a holster. But make a good decision for you. Keep budget in mind, but even on a budget, things like this SciTac holster are available and you can actually pick one up for about $30, which is actually a really good deal for something that's specifically made for your firearm. So I'll go ahead and show you real quick what I mean by specifically molded, right? So here's a, the P. 320C again, you put it into the reckoning holster, it's in there, it's fit, it's perfect. There's no, there's a seamless fit to it basically. And at the same time it has retention by being such a good fit that the firearm's not gonna just come out, okay? So pull that out. And then same story over here with the SciTac holster. Um, you go ahead and slide it in, you can hear an audible click once it goes in, you ready? There you go. So it clicked in, there's a security button right here, and you just push on that and pull the firearm right out. But this is what you're looking for when it comes to a holster. You want the specific fit, you want it to work properly, and you wanna make sure that it's gonna do exactly what you're looking for when it comes to carrying a firearm on your waistband to defend yourself with at all times. Something like this Reckoning holster is awesome. You can convert it, it can be outside the waistband, inside the waistband, and you're gonna get your money's worth. And things like crossbreed holsters, you know, a manufacturer that stands by their product, have a lifetime warranty and they'll always take care of you if something goes wrong. So keep those things in mind when you're buying a holster, but make sure you at least have a holster to carry your firearm with. Okay, so we already went over holsters, but now we gotta talk about holsters for your magazines, right? Well, they're called mag pouches or mag carriers, but either way, you want a way to carry those extra magazines I already told you you need in order to have additional ammo and additional reloads with you when you are carrying your firearms. So, I always suggest having multiple different options when it comes to being able to carry additional magazines, and I also think that you can get anywhere from really cheap budget all the way up to pretty expensive when it comes to these mag carriers. So. Do your best and just buy what you have. If you have three extra magazines, you're gonna buy you know, two or three mag pouches depending on if they're double or single, right? If you're gonna have 10 extra magazines, maybe you only can feasibly carry maybe at the max six to eight magazines on your body, which would even be a lot anyway. If that's the case, just make sure you have enough mag pouches for what you think you're gonna need and what you feel like is uh, reasonable, okay? so. We have a few different options here. We have the Kydex style, which you know gives you a retention uh, uh, click almost factor when you put a magazine in. I'm just gonna go ahead and show you that real quick, okay? You put it in there and then it's, it's in there. It's not gonna come out, it's got security to it, but then if you need to take it out, you just pull on it and it comes right out, okay? Then you also have this Kydex, which is cool. It's actually by Tolster, and what I like about it is that it can be configured to be inside the waistband or outside the waistband. So just like we talked about with that last Reckoning holster, we can basically use this for concealed carry if you want to hide the magazine in your waistband, or you can flip this clip around to the other side, and then you can actually stick it on your belt and wear it as if it's outside the waistband. So this gives you a lot of options. I really like this holster. It has a cool retention device here on the side where you just use an Allen key and then you just tighten it down or loosen it up to fit your magazine properly. And then the magazine will just slide right in here, no problem, and then you're good to go, okay? And then obviously same as the other polymer or Kydex style holster, you just pull this right out. There's no buttons or anything like that, but it has good enough retention to where it won't fall out. And then you have your more Molly style, pouch style magazine carriers. These are things you're gonna find people having on their belt or on their plate carrier or something like that. So this is just a Velcro setup. The magazine goes in here. It's got an elasticity to it. So you can go ahead and throw the magazine in and then it holds it in there tight and then you close the flap and then you have a protected magazine that's easy to access but is never gonna fall out no matter what basically, okay? And on the back it has Molly attachments. So you can actually attach this to a backpack. You can attach it to a 
battle belt, or you can even just attach it to your regular belt and you just web the uh, molly straps here on the back through the webbing and just make it tight and whatever size you need it to be to go on whatever size belt you're wearing. So um, it does have a lot of options, a lot of configurations. That's why I like these actually most of the time better than the polymer ones. Um, and they're also not going to break. They're fabric, so they have flexibility. If you fall on one or something happens, it's not going to break on you. The only thing I can say is that this tolster is really neat. It does allow you to have inside the waistband, outside the waistband. It's high quality. It has good retention. So if you want something that can do it all for you, this is not a bad way to go, okay? So you just need a way to carry your magazines, have some kind of a carrier or a pouch, and you wanna make sure that if you have a firearm in a holster on your body, you gotta have some extra magazines as well, and this is the way you're gonna carry it. Okay, so next is a storage device. You need a locking storage device for your firearm. You want something, not just like a trigger lock cable that came in the box with your new gun. You don't want something that is easy to break or easy to access if there is a, a mechanical failure of some kind. Get something decent. They're very inexpensive. This is a stack on very basic drawer style safe. That doesn't mean you have to put it in a drawer. It just means it was made for that. Um, basically you put the code in and you open this up and then inside is um, the ability to um, well, it looks like the batteries are dead on this one. So this is an old one I don't use anymore. But either way, this is an example of what you should have. You, you can spend anywhere from $20 to $300 to $1,000 to $10,000 on a safe. Whatever you end up spending, make sure you have at least something like this. This is not very big. It's about the size of an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. And obviously much deeper than that, but just... Space wise, that's how much it's gonna take up. And it will protect your firearm. It will protect your firearm from being used by those who shouldn't be using it, especially if you have children. And it will suffice any legal issues you might have in the sense of saying you didn't have your firearm properly stored. This is a proper storage unit. It locks, it's hard to access. It can't be easily broken open with a crowbar or a pry bar. And it is definitely gonna do the job for you if you want something uh, to just make sure your firearm's safe, especially if you plan on leaving it at home when you're heading to work or whatever it is you end up doing without your firearm. You need something like this. So this is very important uh, on the wheel of, of safety and priority, okay? I would say if you're gonna have a, a new gun, the second thing you need to buy is ammunition, right? Because otherwise the gun's worthless. And the third thing you should probably buy is some kind of a storage unit, locking safe, locking storage unit of some kind. Make sure you're safe, guys. If you're new gun owners, learn all the stuff you need to learn when it comes to safety. Look up videos, read literature, check out the NRA. I know not everybody's a big fan of them, but at least they have all the literature and all the information there about how to be safe. And then make sure you store your firearm properly. This is probably the biggest mistake of new gun owners out there, not storing their firearms properly. And then nothing um, worse can happen than a big accident. Nobody wants to see anything like that happen. So please make sure you buy something like this and just put it on the list of uh, must-haves when it comes to being a new gun owner, especially when it comes to owning a pistol because it will fit in here no problem at all. Okay, so the next part of being a new gun owner and the part that people probably like the least about being a gun owner is the cleaning supplies. You're gonna need a cleaning kit. Make sure you pick up a cleaning kit and make sure you properly clean and maintain your firearm. You're gonna need to do some research, you're gonna need to watch some videos, you're gonna need to read the manual that your firearm comes with and learn the proper way to clean and take care of your firearm. I suggest if this is your first gun, go out, buy a universal cleaning kit. They're very inexpensive, about 20 bucks usually, but they come with solvent, lubricant, brushes, they come with all kinds of accessories you need to be able to clean your firearm properly, okay? And that is where you wanna get started. It at least gives you the idea of what you need, and then when you go to watch those videos or you go to read the manual about how to take care of your firearm properly, you'll see what all those tools are gonna to be used for. So when it comes to that, you can buy all types of universal cleaning kits, but one of the ones I like is this Otis one right here. You can see these in the store. They're very compact and almost have every single thing inside of them that you'll need in order to clean your firearm properly. They have patches for cleaning the firearm. There are some things I've added in here, so you won't get every single item that you see in here with your uh, Otis kit if you get one, but they have the brushes and the bristles you need in order to clean out your barrel. Um, they have different attachments here for um, utilizing brushes and picks and all kinds of other things. And then on the other side here, here's where some of the other accessories are, where you can um, actually utilize the cable function, which is what this kit is. It's a cable-based cleaning kit. It is made to be able to pull this cable right here through the firearm in order to clean the barrel and uh, make sure everything's properly taken care of. And then you have everything else you need in here in order to lube and take care of the, um, uh, the, the firearm itself as well. So um, 
Awesome little kit, has everything you need in it. And actually, this one, I don't have it in here right now because I've kind of moved some things around, but these actually come with a little bottle of lubricant as well, which is great because then you can buy this kit and literally have every single thing you need to clean that firearm. And in case you didn't know this and you're a new firearm owner and you just picked up your first pistol, right? You need to clean that firearm before you can take it out shooting. There's a bunch of factory grease and gunk and dust and all kinds of stuff left all over the firearm. Make sure you go clean it up before you actually take it to the range, okay? You wanna make sure that that's a priority for you and you wanna make sure you're properly utilizing all your cleaning equipment. Now, we also have things like these boar snakes. These are kind of cool. You basically run them through your bore in between firing sessions. It cleans out any obstructions and any fouling inside of the barrel. Um, it's basically just cotton. It soaks up a lot of that stuff. And then it has this a um, uh, little bit of bristles here, right here, which is cool. So it helps scrape out some of the um, fouling in there. And then you just run it through and make sure that barrel doesn't have any obstructions, okay? So go ahead, set this over here. We also have patches, which you're gonna need. Patches are what you usually put the lubricant or the hops number nine solvent on in order to get out some of that nasty from the barrel. So you're gonna need a bunch of patches. Just pick up a pack, it's a way to go. And then down the road, what you're gonna see is eventually you'll start putting together something like this 50 caliber ammo can I have that is just full of fun cleaning accessories, okay? So you have all kinds of stuff in here you're gonna end up using and needing. I mean, I, there's tons of stuff in here. But for the time being, if you wanna at least just get one more item for a cleaning kit, if you bought a universal kit like the Otis one or maybe one of the other ones that has a cleaning rod in it, which is, you know, kind of more of like the standard issue style cleaning kit, then you're going to want to buy at least one bottle of CLP. So you get some kind of a CLP. Not all of them are made by Lucas. There's other CLPs out there, but basically it cleans, lubricates, and protects. So it's like a do it all style of lubricant solvent that you can use for just about anything. So make sure you pick some of this stuff up. You're going to need it. And then uh, everything else you'll just build from down the road. Okay. You don't have to buy everything all at once. I've definitely spent years putting together a bunch of this stuff. But make sure you at least have the basics. Get a universal kit of some sort, okay? Like this Otis one. A boar snake's not the worst thing to have, but you don't need it, need it. And then um, you're going to need patches. So just make sure you pick some up, okay? So cleaning, very important. Make sure you do it and make sure you have the right supplies for it. Okay, so you're gonna need some kind of hearing protection. There's a lot of different styles out there. You can spend a lot of different amounts of money on your hearing protection. So my suggestion is if you wanna get the little disposable ones that we all know, the little orange ones that you squeeze and stick in your ear, go for it. I mean, they're not the worst thing. They do the job and they'll at least get you through in the beginning, especially if you already just spent a bunch of money on a new gun. But if you want something that's gonna last forever and be really uh, important to use at the range and it's something that you're gonna to want to wear and be comfortable with, then buy some over the ear hearing protection. These are Howard lights. They're actually really nice. And what's cool about these is they have this function on them where they have a microphone. Okay. And you can turn on the volume. There's the microphone right here. You turn on the volume right here. And what it does is it picks up sound. It actually can pick up more sound than what I can usually hear without them on. And then it cuts out any sound and dampens the noise as soon as a firearm goes off. So it knows what decibels to pick up on. It cancels out the noise and you can still hear your friends and still talk to everybody around you while wearing them. And then as soon as a gun shot goes off, you don't hear it. So these are really nice and they're very inexpensive. I think I picked these up for like $24, right? And then there's also an audio jack here. So you can actually set this up with your phone. You can hook it up to a timer. So you can do some timing drills if you're out at the range. You can also use it to listen to music or something while you go out shooting. Not that I suggest doing that, but it just gives you a lot of options and I think it's really cool. And I also really think these are comfortable. So this is my suggestion. Get some decent hearing protection. They have all kinds of colors, all kinds of sizes. These are actually for my daughter. Um, so that that way, you know, she can go out. She doesn't do any shooting quite yet, but she does at least hang out and watch and she can be, um, you know, properly protected and wearing proper safety gear while doing so. So make sure you get some hearing protection. You're going to need it for the time you're spending at the range. Okay. So last on the list is going to be eye protection. You need to wear eye protection. There's brass shell casings flying all over the place. There's possibility of ricochets. There's possibility of a lot of things happening when you're out at the shooting range. And honestly, it's just not worth losing an eye over. So make sure you get some decent eye protection. You want to get stuff that's generally specifically made for the application, but you can wear sunglasses or something like that when you're out there. Just make sure you are wearing at least something. But if you want to do it the right way, go out, buy some specific shooting glasses that are made with polycarbonate lenses that are supposed to be able to hold up well to some kind of a... Um, uh, 
an, an event. You know, you want something that's not going to crack immediately as soon as it gets hit by a little pebble or something. You want this to hold up and actually protect your eyes if something flies at them at high speed and has a lot of force behind it. And, you know, these glasses are made specifically for shooting, so I know they'll do the job at hand if need be. But if you uh, at least want to get out to the range and you don't have it in your budget yet to buy some shooting glasses that are specifically made for it, at least wear some sunglasses or at least wear something that protects your eyes. Goggles, anything. Just don't go shooting without eye protection, guys. It's a bad idea and it's something that you need to keep in mind because as a new shooter, you're maybe not fully aware of all the different things that can happen or can go wrong when out at the range. So you want to just take every precaution and wearing eye protection is almost a necessity at almost every single shooting range you'll ever visit. So just make sure you have something and bring your own. Don't rent eye protection because generally it is gross and it is hard to see through and there's a million other reasons why. It's the same reason you don't want to, you know, rent a paintball mask when you go paintballing, okay? So if you have any questions about eye protection, I mean, just start searching it up because there's a million different options, but just try to get something specifically made for the job with nice um, hard polycarbonate lenses that aren't going to break the second that you drop them or the second that something gets kicked up and tries to hit you in the eye. So make sure you have eye protection and that's all I'm going to say about that. All right, so that's the eight items you're gonna to wanna to purchase and get as soon as you just became a new gun owner, okay? Specifically around the pistol platform. There's a lot of things out there and a lot of options, so I wanted to try to simplify it as best I could and give you some ideas of what you should be looking for. If you just start going ham out at your local sporting goods store, you're gonna lose a lot of money in the process and maybe not have everything you actually still need. So I wanted to try to help out all those new gun owners out there. Welcome to the party. We appreciate every one of you and we wanna help you learn. So if you have any questions at all, or you're not sure about what to buy next, hit me up down below in the comments, or you can go to my website, magicprepper.com, and shoot me a contact form, and I will respond to you. I get back to just about every single person I can, and if I don't, it's because I forgot. So, um, I really hope this video was informational. I hope you guys learned something. If there's anything in here that you didn't agree with, even, and maybe you're a veteran, you know, you're somebody who knows their stuff, Go ahead and hit me up in the comments below and let me know where I screwed up or what I missed. But either way, I think there's a lot of good ideas here. I think there's a lot of direction now for those new gun owners to try to um, put themselves in a position where they feel comfortable about their new firearm. They have the things they need for it to be what it is they bought it for. An SHTF gun to protect themselves with while all this stuff is going on in the world. So if you have anything else to say at all, go ahead and say it. Otherwise, that's going to be it for Magic Crowd.